Okay, good evening everybody and uh, welcome to this evening's uh, information evening about Silver DV. Um, so just a quick introduction, my name's Jake Blum, so I work in the outdoor learning department um, alongside Christopher Lucas, who you will have uh, had dealings with uh, if you took part in Bronze DV last year. Uh, so part of my role this year um, is to look after DV um, alongside Chris. So Chris is here as well this evening managing the chat. So if you've got any questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat box. Uh, I'm not anticipating to this evening taking long, should take about 30 minutes and we'll just go through uh, Silver DOV, uh, all the various sections and the expedition section. Uh, so the first bit um, just wanted to talk about was bronze that we did last year with a great summer of expeditions. Uh, obviously because of COVID, we couldn't uh, get um, to do a, a normal expedition, but it was great to be able to do them uh, under the COVID um, adaptions and with uh, some really good expeditions that took place. It's really nice to see that there's a lot of activity going on on EDV at the moment as well and um, lots of sections are being completed and it's great to see that people are cracking on and getting all of that done. Um, if you're uh, using the app and uploading um, your information and assessor reports, can you just make sure um, that they're being marked as assessor reports. We've uh, found this year that if they're not being marked as assessor reports, they're not pinging up straight away on our system and we have to go looking for them. So it's really quick and easy if they're marked as assessor reports, that means that we can uh, see them and have a check through them and approve them as soon as possible. Um, there is lots that haven't yet logged on to EDV though. I'm sure you're all um, doing your uh, sections and working away at those but if we can make sure that they're logged um, on EDV then we can get bronze finished as soon as possible and move on to your silver award and if you need any assistance or anything for that please do come and see us and ask us um, for help and we'll be more than happy to help you out. So silver DAV very much uh, the same as bronze it's just a step up so there's still four sections to the award. We've got our volunteering, physical, skills and our expedition section. As I say, it is a step up from bronze, so that means the time scales are slightly different. So the volunteering section takes six months to complete now and the physical and skills, one of those needs to be done for six months and one of those needs to be done for three months. If you're entering silver as a direct participant, so that means you haven't done bronze. That's absolutely great. Um, but what that does mean is one of the longer sections, so either the volunteering or the uh, physical or skill that you're doing for six months needs to be done for an additional six months. So that means one of your sections, and we recommend it's normally the one you enjoy most, is done for 12 months. Then the expedition section uh, lasts uh, three days and two nights. So it's an additional day that we're out um, on physical. So the um, activities need to last for about um, an hour a week and you'll need to do those for the time period that you say that you're going to do them. It also um, needs an assessor to mark them off um, afterwards. So that needs to be someone that's not a family member or someone from within your household. And ideally it needs to be someone that knows about the activity that you're doing. So if you're doing football for your physical section, then a football coach would be a great person to have to do the physical section and sign that off. So volunteering is a um, great way of helping out in the community and it's a great section to have on DV. Lots of uh, students in the past have helped out at scouts clubs, they've helped run school clubs, um, after school clubs, helping elderly neighbours, um, volunteering in charity shops. Um, but the key message here is it is volunteering. So it can't be doing a Saturday job, but just doing it free of charge. And it needs to be for a charity or community organisation. Can't be going in to a commercial organisation and effectively doing free labour. And volunteering students can struggle with, um, but there's loads of school clubs that are running now again at school that are great to get involved in. So find something that you're passionate about and get involved and volunteer with that. Physical section is one that students don't tend to struggle with. It's one that most students are doing already. 
and um, that can be anything uh, from team sports that you do as part of a school club or individual sports that you take part in um, at the weekend. Anything that's uh, getting your heart um, racing is um, a really good idea. And like I say, that can be done uh, in a team or that can be done as an individual. Uh, so the next section is the skill section. Uh, now this is really um, designed to help further and develop a new knowledge. Um, and we've got students that do things um, along the lines of cookery, um, music and performing arts, or learning different life skills. And at the moment, uh, because of the pandemic, there's loads of great uh, free options that students can take part in online, download a free course, take part in that. And you just need to find an assessor that's happy to sign you off um, for that part of the award. Now, DOV, um, what it's saying about your character when you um, get your DOV award is a lot about your um, self uh, resilience and being able to um, rely on yourself and get the award done. Now, year 10 going into year 11 is a busy year. We've moved DOV into year 10 a number of years ago, so we're not in, um, clashing with exams, but it's still a busy year as students start their GCSEs. So the um, the reliance is on the student to look after their award, take it on and uh, run with it and really manage their time effectively so that it's not um, clashing with anything else. There's a lot of students around you in Ferris. There's people in your year group that will be doing silver. Um, you Lots of you will have done bronze, but there's lots of students in um, different year groups that have taken part in their DV. So definitely speak to people around you if you're stuck or need a hand with it. There's lots of creative ways that um, people have taken part in DV in the past. Now we've currently got about 400 students um, on EDV that we're managing at Traferis. Now what that means is we can't go through and check each student individually um, to offer advice. We're here and we're happy to help, but the students need to run with their award themselves and come and find us um, when they need help and assistance. We can't go through on a daily basis and check each participant's awards. But please do come and find um, any member of um, the outdoor learning team. So there's Mr Lucas, myself and Mr Bunnell, um, who's in the first aid office. Go and speak to all three of us. We're in Y36. Now we are running a really busy programme this year at Traferis, which means we're only in the office on a Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, so please do come and find us in the first instance. But if you can't find us, we'll add everyone to the Silver DV Teams group. So pop your questions in there or send us an email to ntol.net and we'll be more than happy to help you. But the award is the students. So we want to see them putting in as much work as possible and really taking ownership of their award. So the expedition section is the one that um, most people think of when they think of DV, and that's the section that we provide the most support with at Traferis. Now, um, the bronze is ruled down under the COVID um, adaptions, and we're hoping that if it sort of stays where it is and guidance doesn't change, to be able to run the expeditions um, back in the normal way that we used to, and that is um, as residential expeditions. So we'll have a three day practice, um, with two nights camping, followed by two route planning sessions that will happen after school um, and then we'll go out for a three day, two night qualifying expedition. The uh, route planning days, we'll come on to it um, in a bit, but they are crucial to attend and are really important. Now I'd just like to um, cover the cost of the expedition. Now we do heavily subsidise um, the expedition cost to allow it to be open to as many students as possible and this year we're asking for a contribution of £100 um, for the silver award, £29 of which um, is payable by Wednesday the 24th of November. Once we've got all your consent forms in I'll add you to the parent pay group so that that can be paid um, when you're ready. Now it's important to note that all the staff in my salary and uh, Mr Luke's salary, it's all costed separately. So you're not paying for us and all of the um, costs break down as following. So uh, main expense really is minibuses and um, campsite fees. 
but as you can see the total does equal more than what we are currently asking for a contribution and we try and keep that as low as possible. If anyone does have any issues um, with the payment please don't let that be a barrier please do speak to us um, as soon as you can and we'll see what we can do. We want as many people as possible to be able to take part in the Silver Expedition. Now the practice expedition this year is going to be taking place on Friday the 29th of April uh, through to Sunday the 1st of May. And apologies, the letter did say June. It is just a three day practice expedition and we'll be heading up to Dartmoor. The purpose of the practice expedition is to give students all the necessary skills in camp craft, in hill skills, in navigation skills to allow them to have a really successful qualifying expedition. Students will be walking in groups of between four to seven with um, leaders, so that might be our sixth form leaders um, or some of our volunteers, and they'll be giving them all the skills that they need um, to have a really successful qualifying expedition. We then go on to the route planning sessions. Now these happen on Wednesday the 4th and Wednesday the 11th of May, um, and they'll be after school and we'll let you know a room um, nearer to the time. These sessions are absolutely crucial as to have a successful qualifying expedition. The route has to be planned by the participants themselves. So we'll go over all the necessary skills for route planning and what students want to get out of their expedition and then they will plan their route themselves. And we've done this over two um, after school sessions and it will usually take the two after school sessions. So attendance at those is absolutely crucial. We'll then move on to the assessment expedition, uh, which is Friday the 10th through to Sunday the 12th of June. And we do that down on West Penwith, uh, which is down near Land's End, absolutely lovely part of the county. Now, part of the um, assessment expedition, uh, students will meet a external expedition assessor and they will make sure that students are completing the expedition through to um, the standard set out by DOV. So they're the 20 conditions. Now we don't have any say over those 20 conditions and they're there to make sure that students at Newquay Ferris are receiving exactly the same silver award as students from other schools up and down the country. So it's really important that participants and students are listening to all of the training sessions and to the route planning sessions to ensure that they are up to the standard and have a really successful qualifying expedition. Now part of the um, Part of the um, need for the qualifying expedition is that students are self-sufficient. So that means they're not walking with an adult, with a member of staff for the entire time. And this means that we remote supervise the groups. And I just want to touch upon this um, briefly as you're providing consent um, for the expeditions. And I think it's important that you know um, what remote supervision is. Now, this means that we're not directly with the students at all times but because of the knowledge that's within the staff team, um, the qualifications that we hold and our um, in-depth knowledge of the area, along with the training that students have received, it means that we're able to get a good picture of where students will be at all times and have a really sufficient um, and complex safety mechanism in place um, to locate students and to ensure that they are um, looked after sufficiently. If anyone has any queries or concerns about remote supervision or would like a bit more information on how we supervise groups, then please do get in touch with me um, and I'm more than happy to chat through in greater detail about the remote supervision. I just think it's important that you do all um, have a good understanding of what remote supervision is and how that works. So that's a three day um, qualifying expedition and hopefully it'll be gloriously sunny as it was for some of our bronzes. So to bring it all to a close, it is the students awards and it's down to them to take the lead. We're not going to be pushing um, for you to get your awards signed off. So really do take ownership of the award and make sure that you're getting all of the deadlines done. So I've spoken most about the expedition this evening. It's worth bearing in mind the expedition is only 25% of the award and there's the three other sections that make up a complete silver award. So make sure that you are spending sufficient time on those sections and that you're working away at those. Hopefully, by the time we get to the qualifying expedition um, in June, you'll have done a lot of work on those sections and the 
qualifying expedition will be the final tick. We can get lots of silver awards processed before the summer holidays. So um, sections don't need to take over your life. Um, then normally you'll find that you're already doing those sorts of things and working um, and taking part in those activities. So we don't anticipate it taking over um, a huge amount more of your time. And it's look at what you're doing and how that can be worked in to the different sections that are needed for DOV. And um, the deadlines that we set are, um, we're very strict on those. Um, as I said, we've got 400 plus students um, on EDOV. We run a significant number of other programmes, which means we haven't got huge lead times into what we're doing. So we are very strict on our deadlines. So when we set a deadline, we do ask um, that it's met as much as possible and use that with your own um, and award and the other sections that you do in. So really set yourself a deadline, set your goals and make sure you're completing it on that time. As I said earlier, the DOV rules are out of our control, so we will train um, groups to the DOV standard. We'll make sure they've had all the training, but they've got to um, follow on with that and continue what we've trained. Our expedition assessors have to make sure that students are to the same standard as other students up and down the country. So please do make sure um, that you're following the instructions that were given and realise that the rules are not ours and not set by us. Um, a significant amount of our programme is run by volunteers and all of the staff and leaders that are out at the weekends on the DOV awards are volunteers and they're giving up hundreds of hours every year to help support um, the different programmes that um, the Outdoor Learning Department runs and a thank you really does mean the world to them so please whenever you're out and you see our volunteers, do remember to give them a thank you because it really does mean the world to them. So <clears throat> moving on, uh, we've moved into the 21st century in the Outdoor Learning Department and all of our um, paperwork is now online. So um, there was a let uh, in the letter there was links to the enrolment form and our consent form. It's great to see those been pinging in over the last few days. Um, if you can just make sure that you're please completing both the consent form and the enrolment form. Um, we've got lots of one coming back and lots of the other coming back, but we're not having both come back um, from everyone. So please just make sure you're completing both of those um, forms. And remember that payment is due um, of £29 um, on Wednesday, the 24th of November. So once I get consent form in, um, it'll take me a couple of days, but I'll then get you added to the um, parent pay group so that can be paid and then we'll ask for the uh, remainder of the payment to be made before the practice expedition. And those that um, haven't finished their bronze yet, please make sure you're finishing that as soon as possible so we can uh, get on with the silver award and get that finished. And then start all your silver sections. So make sure you do come and ask us any questions. We're in Y36. Uh, Mr Bunnell's in the medical room, you can ask him. Lots of students around that have done DFV, so ask as many as possible. But does anyone have any questions? Let me just go over to the chat. So if you've got any questions, please do uh, pop them in the uh, box below, in the uh, chat box. So I'll stay um, live for a few minutes uh, just to wait to see if there's any questions, but if not, um, please feel free to uh, leave and I hope that was all okay.
Uh, so the um, bronze activities, um, if you can make sure you're logging in onto the um, EDV, so you can do that on the app, um, add all of the information. And then uh, Chris has popped in the um, chat a link to the assessor portal. So if you found an assessor, if you ping them that link, um, they can add it all on electronically, um, or you can use the app to photograph um, any bits of paper that have got an assessor report on. And then if you add that onto ED of V um, and then mark that as an assessor report, that will then ping up on our system and we can sign those off. OK, so um, thank you very much, everyone. Um, we'll end the meeting here. If you've got any more questions, um, please do send them to um, ntol at um, and we'll get back to you as soon as possible.